Hello and greetings ladies and gentlemen. This video is a clip from my upcoming video on Volos Waterdeep and Ceridian, which is the last chapter in the Waterdeep Dragon Heist adventure book. This clip covers Waterdeep's celebrations and holidays. City celebrations. At many times of year, hardly a ten day can pass in Waterdeep without the staging of some rite, race, or rousing ceremony of civic pride. Here, I will briefly summarize the most widely celebrated events on the calendar, from the first of Hammer to the last of Nidal. Hammer 1. Winter Shield. Marking the start of the new year, this observance is a widely recognized day off work, when folks sip warm ciders and broths often laced with herbs for health, and to bring on visions, and stay inside. They tell tales of what interested them, or was important in the year just done, and discuss what they intend to do, or should deal with, or things that everyone should keep a hawk's clear eye on in the year ahead. Such talk inevitably leads to discussions of politics, wars, and the intentions of rulers. Maps are usually consulted, and it is widely considered lucky to possess and examine a map on Wintershield, Map sales are brisk in the 10 day preceding this holiday. Altoriac 14, the Grand Revel. Led by the clergy of Soon, Sheris, and Lyra, the Grand Revel is a day of dancing, music, and the consumption of sweet treats of all kinds, from chocolate to red fire mint candies. Although some of the dancing is wanton and performed for show, large scale ring dances in the street for all ages are also popular. All the dancing ends at dusk, after which bards and minstrels perform at love feasts for families. Couples, or those desiring to become couples, slip away together to kiss, exchange promises, and trade small tokens of affection, often rings blessed by clergy with prayers of faithfulness. Even if you have no paramour, indulge a little in the dance and food of this fine tradition. The night might be cold, but your heart will be warmed. Chess 1. Ryastertide. This holiday is named in honor of Lathander's first prophet, Ryaster, a young blind boy, who was cured of that blindness by the dawn's light, on this day, more than seven centuries ago. That holy event occurred in the vicinity of Silverymoon, but Lathander has long had a much larger temple in Waterdeep, and a following to match. Each of the faithful dons bright garb of sunrise hues, and keeps one eye covered until the next dawn, in honor of Ryaster. If you want to feel like a local, catch the eye of any celebrant you see, and wink. Fine friendships have grown from far less. Chess 19. Fey Day. The veil between this world and the fairy realm of the Feywild is thought to be weak on this day. Though this phenomenon provokes caution in rural areas, with folk avoiding woodlands, putting offerings of food on doorsteps, and the like, it is an occasion of much drinking, singing, and dancing in Waterdeep. The wealthy host elaborate masked balls, while poorer folk don costumes of their own make and travel door to door, gaining brief entry into the celebrations, in exchange for performing a song or a short play. All adopt the guises of fey beings, and the supposed rulers of the Feywild, such as Queen Titania, Oberon, and Hearsome, the Prince of Fools. Those inclined to remain sullen, in the face of such frivolity, had best stay home, for celebrants do their utmost to evoke a smile from those they meet. Chess 21-30, Fleetswake. This festival celebrates the sea, maritime trade, and the gods of the sea, navigation, and weather. It spans the last 10 day of chess, and includes a series of boat races, the Shipwrights Ball at the Shipwrights House, and guild-sponsored galas at the Copper Cup Feast Hall, which is located in the Docks Ward. According to custom, the winners of the various competitions do not keep their trophies and earnings, but deliver them to the priests of Umberley, at the Queenspire, her temple on the beach, by the east entrance to the Great Harbour. At the conclusion of the festival, the last two days of Fleetswake are the occasion of the Fair Seas Festival. During this time, there is much feasting on seafood, the harbor is strewn with flower petals, and city guards go from tavern to tavern collecting offerings for Umberley. Collection boxes also appear at large festival gatherings. Upon sunset of the final day, the collected coin is placed in chests, and dumped into the deepest part of the harbor. 
This festival has existed in a number of forms, since the first trade meets occurred here, more than two millennia ago, and an uncountable amount of wealth remains sunken in what has long been known as Umberley's Cash. The area is closely watched by merfolk guardians, whose standing orders are to kill anyone attempting to disturb it. Rumors abound that the chests have magical protections. One story tells of thieves who stole some of the collection years ago, and tried to leave the city under false pretenses, only to see a squall spring up as soon as their ship left the harbor. A huge wave shaped like a hand, swept the thieves overboard, but spared the ship and its crew. Tarsak 1-10 Walking Tide. This festival has long gathered a number of older holidays, under one name, stretching those celebrations into a holiday season, that lasts a ten-day. Among the rituals in homage to the goddess of wealth and trade, are these, Caravants, Tarsak 1. This gift-giving holiday commemorates the traditional arrival of the first caravans of the season into the city. Many parents hide gifts for their offspring in their homes, telling the children that they were left by old Carvas, a mythical peddler who arrived with the first caravan to reach Waterdeep, his wagon loaded down with toys for children to enjoy. Golden Night, Tarsak 5. This festival celebrates coin and gold, with many businesses staying open all night, offering midnight sales and other promotions. Some celebrants and customers decorate themselves with gold dust, and wear coins as jewelry. Guilds meet, Tarsak 7. On this holiday, guild members gather in their halls, for the announcement of new policies, and a celebration of business concluded for the year. These gatherings culminate in a gala festival, and dance sponsored by several guilds, which lasts from dusk till dawn, and overruns the market, the Sinosher, the Field of Triumph, and all areas in between. Lay round, Tarsak 10. In times long past, Joaquin caught Lyra, the goddess of illusions and deception, attempting to cheat her in a deal, and buried her under a mountain of molten gold as punishment. A commemoration of that event, Lay round is the day for guild members to pay their annual dues and for guild masters to meet with the lords of Waterdeep, and renew their charters for another year. Myrtle 6-9. The Plowing and Running. Rural areas around the city, observe this holiday in the traditional sense, of shared activities of plowing fields and moving, or, running, livestock. But within the city, the holiday is celebrated with a series of races. Foot, horse, and chariot races are run through courses in each ward, and the winners from each ward compete at the Field of Triumph. If you really want to see the wards come to life, this is the time. Pick your favorite, wear its colors, and cheer alongside its residents. Better yet, if you are of an adventuresome bent, register in your favored ward, and compete. Who knows? Your name or visage might soon have a place in the House of Heroes. Cthorn 1. Trolltide. On this day commemorating Waterdeep's victory in the Second Troll War, children run through the city, acting like trolls, banging on doors and growling, from high sun till dusk. Home and shop owners are expected to give the children candy, fruits, or small items. Those who give no treat, can expect to become the target of a trick at sundown. This mischief typically takes the form of troll scratchings at doors and windows. Those with more malicious intent, sing screechingly in the wee hours, and hurl raw eggs at windows, signs, and the heads of those, who try to stop them. Have some candy on hand, or some sweet rolls, and all will be calm where you live. Cthorn 14, Guildhall Day. This day is a time of trade fairs. Most shops are closed, and street sales are suspended for all, but walking food peddlers. Guildhall Day celebrates the fruits of everyone's labor, with revelations of new products, innovations, fashions, and signage, extolling the extent and quality of guild members' services and wares. These offerings usually take the form of glittering displays, but guilds sometimes also sponsor brief plays, or other hired entertainments, such as jugglers, singers, magic shows put on by hedge wizards and professional raconteurs, at which prizes or free samples are distributed. Many guilds try to recruit during this time. Guildhall Day is an excellent time to browse the city's merchandise, and it does not matter if you cannot afford what you see, because you cannot buy it, that day anyway. Cthorn 20, Dragon Down. This day in Cthorn is celebrated with bonfires and rituals, to tame, or, drive down, dragons. 
In Waterdeep, the celebrations take the form of parades, that center around effigies built of wood and cloth, and filled with straw. Each effigy is named, and has a traditional depiction, for it represents one of a handful of dragons the city has faced in its history. After being paraded to a square, near where the dragon was defeated or driven off, the enormous effigy is burned. The height of the celebration comes, when the effigy of Kistarianth the Red is burned on the slopes of Mount Waterdeep. A Draco-lich version of Kistarianth is then carried up the slopes and burned as well. These proceedings symbolize the defeat of Kistarianth, first by the paladin Ather, and again decades later, by his son, Pyrgeron. Tradition dictates that the winners of the races, run during the plowing and running, take the role of the dragon slayers, with the champion of the chariot race representing Ather, and the champion of the horse race playing Pyrgeron. Flame Rule 1. Founders Day. This day commemorates the birth of the city. The Field of Triumph is the site of illusory displays that chronicle the history of Waterdeep, as well as martial exhibitions by the guard and other worthies. Many feast halls sponsor Founders Day costume contests, with prizes going to those who wear the best recreations of the garb of historical personages. Once banned as frivolous and distracting, the practice of veiling Castle Waterdeep with an illusion has been reinstated. Several mages come together to produce the effect, which seemingly transforms the castle into the ancient log fortress of Nimor. The illusion typically lasts from midday to sunset, unless someone has the audacity and magical might to dispel it, and is regarded as a stunning work of magical art. Flame Rule 3 to 5, Sornin. Sornin is a festival of both Joaquin and Lathander, and is used for planning business, making treaties and agreements, and receiving envoys from unknown lands and traditional foes. Much wine is drunk over this three-day occasion when, as the saying goes, my enemy is like family to me. If you are a newcomer to the city, this time is an excellent opportunity for you to engage with new partners in business or to gain financial support for some endeavor. My agreement to write Volo's Guide to Waterdeep was signed on a warm Sornan evening many years ago, so who knows where your own initiative will take you. Flame Rule 7. Lyra's Night. Originally a celebration held only in Waterdeep, this holiday has since spread up and down the Sword Coast. It has received a recent boost in popularity, from the custom started in Baldur's Gate, of lighting celebratory smoke powder fireworks, all purchased from Felagir's fireworks of that city, and utilized only by the city guard, of course. This nightlong festival honors the Lady of Joy, with dances and balls throughout the city. Pink beverages, ranging from healthy juices to deadly strong intoxicants, are imbibed. The boom and crackle of smoke powder explosions go off all night long, so you might as well stay up with the locals and enjoy the show. Alesis 1. Oghair Ron's Day. Many small rituals are held throughout this day, dedicated to honoring the first open lord. The lords of Waterdeep toast Oghair Ron and the Watchful Order, and guild masters toast the lords in Oghair Ron's name. Commoners leave violets, Oghair Ron's favorite flower, around Oghair Ron's tower, on his statue in the City of the Dead, and atop the altars of the House of Wonder. Bards perform songs in honor of the wizard all over the city. The Open Lord visits taverns and inns throughout Waterdeep to wish the people well, giving short speeches, offering toasts to Oghair Ron's memory, buying rounds of drinks, or paying for meals or accommodation. Needless to say, establishments of those sorts are generally full throughout the day. Elaine 21, Bright Swords. On this day, the City Guard, the City Navy, and the City Watch, all in glittering array, conduct parades, give demonstrations of martial skill, and stage mock battles. Those desiring to join their ranks are given a chance to demonstrate their prowess, usually with wooden practice weapons, in contests against veteran soldiers. Makers and vendors of weapons sell their wares openly in the markets, experts who can hurl or juggle weapons show off their skills, and the wards compete in wrestling and boxing matches. The most anticipated part of the day is when horses are cleared from the Field of Triumph and the surrounding streets so that the Griffin Cavalry can perform aerial displays over the crowds in the stadium. Members of the Watchful Order present the cavalry with illusory foes to fight, allowing the Griffin Riders to engage in thrilling battles as the people watch. 
Marpanoth 3, Day of Wonders. The imaginative inventions of the Gondar are revealed on this day, and paraded through the city. These devices range from something as humble as new cabinet hinges, to massive mechanical constructs that walk or roll about. Failure is the paramour of invention, though, meaning it is a rare year when there is not some notable disruption of the celebration. The flying chair of Marshall was one such recent oddity, a device that worked marvelously on the way up, but was incapable of descending. Marshall was rescued by the Griffin cavalry, but his flying chair drifted away, and was never seen again. Marpanoth 7, Stone Shar. Stone Shar is an all-faiths day, during which folks strive not to be idle. Even children at play are encouraged to dig holes, build sand castles, or construct crude models. Waterdavians consider Stone Shar the best day of the year to begin construction of a building, either by digging out a cellar, or laying a foundation. The common wisdom is that folk who undertake new projects on Stone Shar, can expect blessings upon their works in the coming year, whereas individuals who do nothing constructive on this day, can expect all manner of misfortune to rain down on them in the year ahead. Marpanoth 10. Reign of Misrule. Swift on the heels of Stone Shar, comes the reign of Misrule. This day honors Bashaba, goddess of misfortune. People of the city are expected to break trust, belie oaths, and disobey the normal order, as long as no laws are actually broken, and no rift is made that cannot be later bridged. During the reign of misrule, nobles serve meals to their servants, children take control of schools, priests give worship to their gods' foes, and any who wish to may participate in a guild's trade. Pranks are played by and on many, from simple tricks to those requiring elaborate planning. Sundown brings an end to the festivities, and most folks spend much of the night cleaning and reordering things for the following day. Many visitors decline to participate, but doing so often inspires misfortune rather than avoiding it. For fear of catching the bad luck of cynics, citizens do their best to avoid talking to anyone known to not have played along, or dealing with them in any way until God's Day. Marpanoth 15. God's Day This holiday observes the anniversary of the end of the God's War in 1358 DR, when the gods of Farron returned to the heavens. Private shrines are brought out into the open, and many people wear holy symbols of their favored deities. A God's Day tradition in Waterdeep strictly limits the use of magic, in remembrance of the wild magic wrought, during the time of troubles. Though not outlawed fully, spellcasting is allowable, only in self-defense, or in cases of extreme need. At night, this holiday becomes solemn and serious, as many Waterdavians offer prayers, and thanks for the lives they have under their gods. The Griffin Cavalry sets up an immense bonfire at the peak of Mount Waterdeep, honoring the fallen and the risen gods Mirkel, Sirik, Kelimvor, Mistra, Helm, and Au, who appeared here. In thanks for their defense during Mirkel's invasion, and the resulting fires that raged through the southern, dock, and castle wards. God's Day is also a semi-official, be kind to the guard and watch day, in Waterdeep. Feel free to participate, by handing out small gifts and kind words, but be aware that any gift of greater value than a few nibs might be interpreted as a bribe. Marpanoth 30, Liar's Night. This holy day pays tribute to Lyra and Mask. To placate those deities, and ward away their attention, folk of all walks of life don masks and costumes, magical or mundane, to disguise themselves, and play at being other than what they are. Commonly seen mask styles include the black mask symbol of mask, and the mirror face of the priests of Lyra. But there are no bounds on the disguise you don, and the more elaborate and outlandish it is, the more celebrated the wearer. The festivities begin in the evening, when people place candles in hollowed out gourds, or pumpkins carved with faces. Each pumpkin represents a person donning a mask, while the light inside represents the truth of the soul. For as long as the candle remains lit, lies told and embarrassing things done, do not sully a person's reputation, so celebrations often descend briefly into anarchic hedonism. Misfortune is said to come to anyone, who returns to their pumpkin after celebrating to find it unlit, so buy a candle of good quality, and put your gourd beyond reach of the wind. Intentionally blowing out someone else's candle, or smashing someone else's pumpkin is taboo, and risks the wrath of both gods, yet it does occur. 
Tricks and pranks of all kinds are common on this night, and folk expect lies and foolishness. Pickpockets are rife on this day, so few carry much coin with them, having secreted it away somewhere the previous evening. Instead, people fill their pockets and belt pouches with candies. Traditionally, a pickpocket is meant to take the candy and leave a token in return, a tiny toy, a colorful paper folded into a shape, or the like. But this has changed over the years, into adults exchanging candies among themselves, and simply giving candy to children who ask for it. By custom, no deals are made nor contracts signed on liar's night, because no one trusts that parties will abide by them. Illusionists and stage magicians, whether through magical or practical abilities, make the rounds to entertain private parties, having been paid in advance the previous day, or to perform in public spaces, in the hopes that a good show will earn them a meal, and perhaps a place at a private party in the future. Uktar, saloons hallowing, on whatever night in Uktar the moon is fullest, Waterdavians celebrate saloons hallowing. The goddess is the focus of worship throughout the full phase, of course, but the major ceremony on this night is a parade of worshippers leaving the house of the moon at moonrise and moving down to the harbor, where the high priestess wields the wand of the four moons in a ceremony blessing all navigators. This holy relic is said to be the mace wielded by Saloon in her first battle against Shar and again in a fight with her sister during the time of troubles. It miraculously appeared in Waterdeep, after the God's War, and has since been the focus of many divine signs. You can view it in the House of the Moon at other times of the year, but only from a well-guarded distance. If you are lucky, you might see the wand of the Four Moons weep. Droplets said to be the tears of Saloon, manifest on the mace from time to time, and are collected by the priestesses, for use in potions, that can heal, cure lycanthropy, and be used as holy water. Uktar 20, Last Sheaf. Sometimes called the Small Feast, this day of residential feasting is held in celebration of the year's bounty. Small gifts, traditionally hand kegs of ale, jars of preserves, or smoked fish and meats, are exchanged among neighbors, and last letters are gathered for carriage by ship captains and caravan merchants, so called because they are the last to leave the city before travel becomes difficult. Of Waterdeep's many celebrations, this one is perhaps the most relaxed and relaxing. Plan to spend a little extra on good food, and enjoy a meal with those nearest you, be they dearest hearts, or the folk across the hall in the inn. Nidal 11. Howl Down. In honor of Malar, members of the city guard leave the city in groups, on this day, to hunt down known threats to farmers and travelers, including brigands, wolves, owlbears, ogres, and trolls that haunt the roads and wilderness. These hunts typically last no longer than a 10-day. During the same span of time, the city watch engages in its own rigorous hunt for malefactors within the city walls. If you have any reason to doubt your standing in the eyes of the law, avoid Waterdeep for at least a 10-day after Howl Down. With no real hunting to do of their own, the children of Waterdeep spend Howl Down engaging in mock hunts of adults dressed up as monsters, and play at the killing of these predators. Nidal 20. Simral. When dusk comes on this day, folk go outside to locate particular stars that were lucky for their ancestors or that were associated with their own births. They then attempt to stay up through the night, celebrating outside with bonfires, song, and warm drinks. Cloudy nights often draw larger crowds than clear ones, since glimpsing your star through the haze is thought to be a blessing from Timora. Inside buildings, service folk keep roaring fires and engage in making food to keep celebrants fed throughout the long night and into morning of the next day. If you have no particular star of your own, you will find many vendors of star maps willing to divine which is yours, based upon your place and date of birth, and to point you in the right direction for a shard or two.